So run down. RPMs is equal to 0.479 joules. That's from the rotor's moment of inertia calculation. Okay, so there's the immediate slope there. That translates to 7.6 milliwatts. And then here about halfway I did it again. what happens when you see the quiver. That's uh, how many revolutions it took. always occurs at the same RPM. I think it's an artifact of the encoding software. So here, uh, we're going up there and we got the core power off start rotation count. And then we did the slope. So that gives you a good idea of the continuous power dissipation of the coil, or of the rotor going at 552 RPM. It's about, it's about seven and a half milliwatts. And then here, halfway down at uh, 260 RPM, 1.75 milliwatts. The chart recorder is a wonderful thing. Even if it does, then I have a lot of paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So anyway, what happened to the focus? There's that old mystery spot. So, uh, pick up flow in place, open circuit, repeat condition two. You just gotta ask yourself why you aren't seeing data like this from the bats. What exactly is the power dissipation of this Bjorn rotor? I'll bet you it's a tenth of this. I'll bet you their rotor power dissipation is on the order of one milliwatt or less. Look at all that. I got pages and pages of calculations and I got I got chart recorder tape out the wazoo. Look at all that. Look at all that. That's just one folder. Look at I got look at all this. Look at all this. Look at all this. Yeah, here I, I have data in here that uh, shows the cost of uh, generating power. This uh, or depth. And if you had this kind of data from Stjorn, it would be very easy for you to see that. Uh, their claim of uh, excess power is uh, completely bogus. The data that they do give you is irrelevant. What they need to do is give you data like this. Because this is the kind of data that shows you what you need to know before you go off and spend a lot of money. Here is uh, some data that shows the acceleration and, uh, and decelerations as the rotor goes by the magnet. Of course, it speeds up pretty rapidly, so in order to get this at a good enough resolution, I had to take it at six inches per minute. And that's how the rotor speeds up initially. And then this is what it kind of looks like when it's slowing down. So those are the individual accelerations and decelerations as the magnet, as the rotor magnets pass the coil cord. I got data. I got all kind of data. And look, here's another one. Here's another one full of data. Data, data, data. Okay, thanks for watching.